so, so read this read this i'm giving you maybe 20 seconds on this especially this slide this you should be actually understanding completely because you got to know how weak the gravitational force is okay so i think we will do some calculation here on on the blank slide because this is too cluttered take care take care. we will do it from the beginning here and then we'll we'll see the slide also so let's say and i will use the same yeah <laughs> i'll use the same symbols so let's say there are z number of protons here right it's hydrogen like it's not hydrogen it is hydrogen like so and then you have this electron here now what are the forces acting on electron can anybody tell me what are the forces acting on electron you have to participate. Rukaya, what are the forces acting on this electron? Shreya Bhatt, what are the forces acting on this electron? Nina Saboti, Atri, Arvind Thakur, everybody, Linus. What are the forces acting on this electron? Sai Kumar, no. You are, you're right, kind of, not kind of. No, Atri, you're, you're making the same mistake as Sai Kumar is making. Manisha, that is the same mistake that you're making. Everybody is making the same mistake here. It means in the 11th grade, you all studied something com a little not correct. Can anybody tell me? Yes, Grishma, you are the only one who has so far given the right answer. Yes, anybody else besides Grishma? anybody else okay no this is this is not right so see the only equation that we understand here is f equals ma right now force can be anything force is what are the kind of forces gravitational force electrostatic force magnetic force tension force friction force these are called forces now any of those forces that is acting towards the center is called centripetal force no manjushri you're making the same mistake most of the students have said centripetal force i'm asking what is the force acting on the body like grishma saying electrostatic force is the force acting on the body that electrostatic force turns out to be centripetal force do you understand when you're talking of what kind of force it has to be electrostatic magnetic tension friction gravitation these are the types of forces now any of those forces if it is acting towards the center and making the body go in a circle can be tagged as a centripetal force okay so the what are the forces acting on the body it's electrostatic force which is k times uh, the one charge which is z times a because there are z protons there times this electron divided by the radius squared that is the electrostatic force but this force is also the centripetal force so then i can say is equal to mass times acceleration centripetal acceleration is mv squared by r clear okay so then you can cross these out gone gone right this is what you have but then we are saying this is also basically going to follow the postulate given by Bohr, as in uh, MVR should actually be equal to N times H by 2 pi. It has to follow this, right? So then you can either eliminate velocity or you can eliminate radius to get whatever. So you have two equations here, equation one and equation two. You have two variables here, R and V everything else is a known it's it's a known quantity look at this k z e right m um and then what else n n is in terms of n we'll find so h by 2 pi is a known quantity everything is a known quantity right two equations two variables i can use elimination method so let's do the elimination method v is equal to uh, n h by 2 pi mr 
okay take this value and then plug it in here so let's see what i get so i'm going to use blue color here is k z e squared by r is equal to mass times velocity square right velocity square is n square h square by 4 pi square m square r square so let's see what I actually get this R crosses out this so I am getting um, What I don't know R right? I'm getting R is equal to um, If anything else crosses out, let me know M n square h square One of the masses also crosses out right so let's not write mass there So this crosses out this so n square h square by 4 pi square m k z e square so let's see what we get same thing right so n square h square by z yeah that's it right so then you, everything here is a constant except n and z so you can take it out n square by z and all this is a constant Planck's constant pi is a constant k is the the thing that is 4 pi epsilon naught then mass we know and then e square which is charge square so this is the radius now the thing on the inside the parenthesis is going to be calculated to 0 0.529 angstroms so this thing if you plug in all these constants here everything is a constant you get 0 0.529 angstroms so this is the radius anybody who did not follow I'm going to give you some time to understand this and then you can eliminate the other variable and you can get the velocity So this is the velocity So not And that's what you have plugged in the right anybody Atri, Manjur, Grishma, Monisha uh, Anybody who did not understand Right, so now we are getting R is actually directly proportional to N square by Z See, think about it more the what is n here n is the the orbit number no? n is equal to one two three and all that okay. And it goes by common sense also more the n more the radius anyways, right? But then more the atomic number less the radius because electron will be pulled more closer to the nucleus, right? More the Z Less is the radius and that is intuitive also here any other question questions anybody who did not understand this please?